How's it going guys? My name is Tavares and today I am getting rid of my Lexus SD400. That's right, I have made the decision to get rid of it. But before I do, I'm gonna let you guys know how to put up a car for sale the right way. Well, it's time to see her go. Um, I would say she served me well, but uh, she hasn't really served me at all because I haven't done anything with it. That's the reason I'm getting rid of it. Um, it is a 1999 Lexus SC400 and it's in pretty decent shape. Uh, it does have some rust underneath, some pretty terminal rust on the subframe, but that can be fixed and uh, it does have some cosmetic issues. It has an exhaust leak, but other than that, it is a pretty clean example otherwise. What I'm going to do today is I'm just going to show you guys how to uh, basically prep the entire car for a sale, uh, how to put it on Craigslist, how to put it on eBay. Well, I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to put it on the internet, but uh, just kind of tips and tricks of what I do to get the best bang for the buck. And on this, I'm really not going to ask too much. I'm not going to ask for uh, top dollar or anything like that because it does have those issues. So this is just going to go to a good home, somebody that knows all the issues and wants a clean example of uh, what can be a really clean example uh, of this make and model. So without further ado, let's, uh, let's get to the steps of how to put this car up for sale. You want to make sure that the exterior of the car is as shiny as it can possibly be without kind of going overboard. You don't want it to be a uh, show quality car, especially if you're going for a bargain basement price, but you want it to be cleaner than the other examples out there. So what we're gonna do now is uh, I'm just gonna wash the car like you would uh, regularly wash a car in your driveway. It is actually, it's like 96 degrees out here and uh, I am sweating bullets, but it should be okay to wash a car at least, get this car a little cooler than it is now. Probably it's, it's probably really hot. For anyone interested in anything I'm using, uh, whether it be car wash products or otherwise, uh, links will be in the description, but that's not important because uh, we need to get this car nice and clean. So let's get to that. Okay, now that's uh, it's a little better, a little better. It looks a lot cleaner. I haven't finished cleaning yet. Uh, it does need a coat of wax. It, it's not gonna have a, uh, a full like three stage polish or anything like that, but I'm just gonna do a nice once over and honestly cleaned up, uh, cleaned up quite well. There is some, you can see there's like, I don't know what you'd call this tiger striping or something from the paint job. Paint job isn't the best but uh, I can't really do anything about that with polish. But what I can do, and uh, what you guys should do, is stuff like this, the headlight haze. So this is not exactly the worst headlight I've seen, but you can still see some haze, and it is a plastic headlight, so we will be restoring this so it is as close to crystal clear as possible. And let's take a look at the other side. I think the other side is, yeah, it's also pretty much the same thing. So that's actually a really easy solution. You can either go to uh, a auto parts store and get a headlight restoration kit, or you can do like I do and just use a DA, a, uh, a random orbital, uh, and use some Meguiar's M100 or M105. It's like this deep cut co uh, polishing compound. And we're just gonna polish this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mask this off and then just polish this headlight until it's nice and clear. And then what you can do is you can put a sealer on there like you would on anything, on anything on the car. But uh, some people use clear coat. I'm just gonna use a regular sealer and uh, hopefully that should be good for the sale.
Okay, let's uh, take a look at the before. We already saw this headlight and after. Wow, that is a really big difference. So I think these, these might be glass and uh, it looks basically the same, uh, which is not what I can say for the other side. But this is really, really awesome. So what I used is some uh, Meguiar's M100. Uh, they also make M105, which is pretty good, but uh, you want something that will have that uh, cut. Now, for plastic, it doesn't really matter. Um, I mean, you want something that's, uh, that's sort of aggressive. Make sure that this is clean beforehand. You don't want uh, all those contaminants and stuff getting into the plastic. But other than that, I think it's uh, I think it's pretty safe to use on plastic. I am gonna do the other side, and I am gonna put some uh, sealer on both sides. That way, uh, this won't haze over in uh, in a day or two. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really liking this. So that's something you can do in uh, five minutes. Now, if we open up the interior, we can see that uh, it is a marvelous black interior but it is way dirty. So what we're gonna do is I am going to vacuum first and uh, then I'm gonna do some maybe leather conditioning and then some interior uh, detailing with uh, some interior detailing spray. And this thing should look pretty damn spiffy. Okay, so now that I have vacuumed everything, uh, all the carpets, uh, all those dead lizards and spiders away. What I'm going to do now is just give everything a, uh, a good thorough cleaning with uh, this interior detailer. It's a quick interior detailer. You don't need to do anything super fancy. I know that uh, Larry Casilla from MONYC, he does really, really uh, in-depth stuff. Like you can really condition the leather. You have to have specific uh, formulas for, for leather and uh, you can't have that for vinyl and you can't have that for different plastics. But I think to get a car ready for sale, especially one that I'm going to be selling for quite a loss, uh, I'm gonna be selling it for less than I got it for, I'm just gonna give this thing a nice clean. Uh, it's gonna be good enough, and good enough is good enough for me. So uh, right now, it's actually looking a lot better than it did. It actually smells a lot nicer now that I've opened up uh, all the windows and the sunroof uh, to get that, that stank, uh, that uh, dank old smell out. That stank. That's right. I got that stank out. Without further ado, let's get to cleaning. So another thing that I have to note, uh, you probably saw me cleaning these, uh, these stalks. Now, just because we're doing this on a basically zero dollar budget doesn't mean that we have to skimp on the details and the details are important. So all the things that the driver touches, uh, the emergency brake, the, the steering wheel, uh, the stalks, they should be very, very clean. They should be uh, nearly immaculate, as clean as you can make them. Um, the steering wheel is actually really clean. The airbag itself looks like it's a bit, uh, bit sun drenched and uh, I'm not sure if this is dirt. I just can't get it off. Maybe I'm not using, uh, <laughs> maybe Larry Casilla was right and uh, we have to use something different. Uh, but I'm just gonna leave this uh, like this for now. But the stocks are in great shape. The only thing is be very, very careful because with older cars like this, the stocks, um, the painted portions of the stocks, they can rub off pretty easily if you use something even like this, even like the interior detailer and a microfiber cloth. So you have to be very, very gentle. They're very fragile. Uh, but I think that's about it. We're, we're done cleaning the interior. The interior looks great. It looks way better than it did going in. Uh, it wasn't that bad when it went in, but uh, right now it's, it's looking like a million bucks. Also keep in mind that same thing that I said on the exterior, you want to um, finish all the details that you can finish in a day. Uh, that sort of goes on the interior as well. So this missing shift knob, I ordered one from eBay. That should be coming in. So by the time this goes up for sale, that'll be there. And, uh, and yeah, that's it. I mean, if you have any ripped panels, if you have any cracked uh, buttons, uh, buttons are easy to replace. So if those are going out on your car, you should probably just replace them and uh, it'll make that car that much better. It'll make the experience that much, uh, that much sweeter, especially in a car like this where experience is 
everything. So um, yeah, on to the next thing. All right, now this is my favorite part. This is the last part in getting the car prepped for sale. This is actually taking the pictures that you'll be putting up on uh, Craigslist or eBay or what have you. Now, a lot of people don't know how to take a picture. I know a lot of people have, most people have camera phones. Uh, they might have point and shoots. They might even have DSLRs, but uh, most people don't know how to properly compose a photograph. So I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to get all the pictures you need right in your listing and make sure that all your pictures are very informative and they let the buyer know exactly what they're getting. So first off is be as informative as possible. You want as many pictures as humanly possible. Um, there is no such thing as too much. If you have a car with 200 pictures, that just gives the buyer more detail. You can see I, uh, I cleaned the engine bay just a little bit just so the, the mud and crud would uh, sort of make way for the nice plastics. Actually, they're, they're pretty high quality plastics here. And uh, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't, uh, I mean, it doesn't look new, but it also doesn't look horrible. But I digress. You wanna make sure that your car is exposed from all angles. Uh, you wanna make sure that it's also exposed correctly. That, what that means is that right now, it is sort of twilight hours, you can see it's not particularly sunny. Uh, the sun isn't directly on the car. Uh, that would create a lot of harshness. That would create a lot of uh, harsh shadows. Right now, the sun is setting, and this is pretty much the perfect time to take pictures of a car. So you want it at sun down or sun up. And right now it's sun down. Sun down is probably a little easier. But as you can see, the, uh, the hues and tones of the car are pretty pretty good. They're pretty uniform. Uh, I'm not having any weird shadows, uh, nothing like that. And I'm also in a place where I can do 360 degrees of coverage for the car. I can walk around the car. I can take multiple pictures. I can do detail shots. And I also parked it at a slight, a slight steering angle. And the reason why I do that is just, it sort of looks cooler. Let me, let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna close this. And if I put the angle a little further down, like that, well, this is a wide angle lens, but you can see that uh, it makes the car look a little more, mm, not, not aggressive, but uh, just sort of more purposeful. And that's, that's a better angle to take a picture at. You won't want a, a super wide angle like this is, but let me see if, uh, if I zoom in, maybe that'll, maybe that'll help. All right, so that changed the angle just a bit. And now I can see, all right, that, yeah, that's, that's a little better. So that would be a decent picture uh, if I close my garage over there. But uh, yeah, that would be a decent picture and I just go all around the car and take pictures like this. Now, a lot of people think that you need a expensive camera. Honestly, you can just take it with your phone. I will give you two pictures. One I took with my DSLR, my Canon 6D, which cost, $1,800 when it was new, and one I took with my cell phone. And you tell me which one looks better. You have one and two. Not much of a difference, is there? But what, where there is a difference, where you do, where you would want to employ the use of a DSLR is in the interior, especially if it's a dark interior. See, interiors do well with wide angle lenses, like this lens that I have on my camera it can stop shaking. Yeah, so that can go super wide. This is a 10 millimeter lens on a Canon 80D. And right now it's, this would be a really good picture for the interior. And I'd make one from this side, from the passenger side, from the middle, uh, and do some detail shots in here. So the point of taking lots and lots of pictures is that you want to accentuate the good, uh, but you also don't want to drown out the bad because the bad is sort of where the rubber meets the road. Uh, there are a few wasps. Wow, there's like three wasps around here. That's uh, that's concerning. And in any case, um, you want to make sure that all the imperfections of the car are also uh, noticed and uh, noted on the description. So something like this. Like it looks like there was a bit of uh, damage here, maybe some hail, I'm not sure. That would be noticed uh, during the inspection, during you taking pictures, and uh, that would be seen by any potential buyers. So you have to be brutally honest. Unfortunately, there are a lot of bad car dealers that uh, 
do want to just hoodwink you and take your money and give you a subpar product. But that's not what this is about. That's not what I'm about. And hopefully that's not what you guys are about. So uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be it. Uh, this car is ready for sale. I'm going to take some pictures. I'm actually uh, going to take some pictures here in its current form. Hopefully if these uh, wasps will leave me alone. And um, then I'm just gonna do a description. So as far as writing the description, I would say that be that you should be as informative as possible, just like the pictures you took. Because if you took a lot of pictures but you have a crap description, it's not really helping anybody. However, uh, you don't want to also be a brochure for this car. People can Google, people can look up the specs for this car. Uh, you can tread lightly uh, on, on those things like, I don't know, zero to 60 times and uh, horsepower figures, that's, that's all fine. But people want to know what the condition of the car is. People want to know if this car is trustworthy. People want to know if you are trustworthy. Uh, people want to know what the history of the car is. Uh, stuff like that. Stuff like if it was serviced last. Where was it serviced? Um, if you have, the, if you don't have the service history, what is a condition of its individual components? Does it have any rust like this one does? Uh, does it have any egregious faults? I know you guys love it when I say egregious. So all that has to go into the description, and it can get quite lengthy, but that's okay. That is, uh, that is perfectly fine. I'd rather, me as a car buyer, I'd much rather read a lengthy description with every little thing marked off on it uh, versus something saying, I know what I got, come call me if you want to test drive and no test drives because I know what I got. Another thing while I'm back here, if you guys really care, if, uh, if people selling cars in general care about what, uh, what their license plate is and they don't want people getting that information, um, take the license plate off, it's two bolts, sometimes it's four, sometimes it's one. Don't do this or, or that. Don't do that and take a picture. That is extremely, extremely lazy. So just take the license plate off or just take a picture with the license plate on, or you can blur it in Photoshop, it's super easy. I mean, it's, it's so lazy to do it like that, but people still do it. So I think that's it. I think that's all the tips I have for you. Uh, so we went through washing the car. We went through uh, doing all the little bits and bobs that you can do to make the car uh, more sellable, like the headlights and uh, and getting cracked interior panels and, and stuff like that, stuff that's easy to put on. One thing I might have not mentioned is that uh, you should top up all the fluids uh, just to make sure, well, just so you know if there's any leaks. Uh, but also just so the, the next buyer can get something fresh and he doesn't have to worry about it. He or she, I don't know who's going to buy this car. Uh, he or she could get the car and not have to worry about putting in fluids on the way back home at least. So uh, yeah, I think that's going to be it. So that was fun. It, uh, it took a little longer than I thought. I don't know how long this video is going to be, but hopefully that was informative to you guys. As always, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things I'd like you to do to get the word out there that I love doing this stuff. I like sharing all my car stuff with you. Even though this isn't really a build, this is more of a, uh, a how-to on how to get a car out of your life. Uh, I will be getting more cars in my life. But until next time, this is me reminding you to wrench every day.